The 29 to 30 foot sports cruiser segment has been a really critical sector for Windy over the years. We saw the 29 Ghibli right through until 2012. That was superseded by the 28 Coho, which we last saw around about 2021. But here at the Dusseldorf Boat Show, they're looking to take the game on again with the new Windy 29 Hurricane. Now, right from the start, it's very clear that this is a windy sports cruiser for the purist. We've got a very aggressive looking hull, a fine entry, really sharp, cleanly resolved spray rails. No steps, of course, that's not what windy is all about. And as you would expect, it's also inboard powered. We'll have a look into the engine bay in a second. But first, let's work our way round the back and up the steps. Because when you see the deck layout, that's pretty classical windy too. Full beam aft swim platform, as you would uh, expect of an inboard powered boat. A big sun pad aft that gives way to an L shaped dinette further forward. That butts up against the helm seat, and on the port side, the co pilot seat plus an additional seat to look across to the bench seating on the starboard side. Keep it nice and sociable, nice and convivial. As on other boats in the sports cruiser fleet, that seat there on the port side can be swapped for a wet bar instead with a sink and a top loading fridge and a bin. But in spite of the fact that the base layout kind of echoes the heritage of Windy and Windy sports cruisers, this boat feels just a little bit youthful, a little bit more modern. And there's a reason for that, because Mark Tucker of Design Unlimited is the man responsible for the interior design on this boat. And as you can see, it's not quite as modest as you might expect of a Windy sports cruiser. They're always very dynamic and very capable boats, but generally they're quite understated. And this feels a little bit more waspish, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more youthful. But before we get into the cockpit, let's just open up a few of these hatches here. There's a hatch on the port side as you enter the cockpit. And this contains a little netting section with slots for four fenders there. And because this is open to the entire engine bay, the warmth from the engines will dry out your fenders an absolute treat. It's a really good solution, that. Just to the side of that, we have a couple of little storage spaces. And ahead of that, just down one step before you get into the cockpit itself, well, this is where you find the shore power. It does make a tremendous amount of sense because on this boat, we've got the cutout inboard rather than outboard. So they're running that cable to the side of this port deck all the way aft and out around the back of that cleat. I think on future models, they'll make this a little more user-friendly than it is at the moment. But as prototype models go, this is a very well-finished boat. That'll do very nicely. It really opens up very, very wide indeed. There's a huge aperture, really brilliant access to your engine. And actually, the uh, engine options are quite interesting. This is quite unusual for Windy. What we have here is a Yamaha 370. It uses an aluminium block, so it's relatively lightweight, and that should be good for around about 44 knots. Uh, there's also the option of Volvo Penta's D6440, and that's likely to be far and away the most popular option. That should be good for around about 45 knots. And if you favour petrol, you can also have a V8430 for 46 to 47 knots. But in all cases, there's plenty of space down here. We've got the hot water tank there, as well as the heater nestling over there on the starboard side. And here's that uh, fender basket we talked about, open to the uh, warm air provided by that engine. And the batteries are neatly recessed just below the canvases, which again, are nestling exactly where you'd expect them on a windy. So you can raise them very quickly and then tension them with the push button switches to provide quick shelter should you need it. Though I say quick shelter, actually in common with several uh, other boats in the windy sports cruiser fleet, you have to lift the engine bay lid in order to access those canvases. But that's the way they do it. That's the way they've done it for a fair while. And it works effectively enough that they continue with that. Now let's turn about and face forward. In fact, we'll have a look under the deck first, because this is quite interesting in its own right. There we are. We've got a really useful storage tray under there. Very cleanly done, very handy space. It will be a lift-out storage tray, but at the moment, as I say, this is prototype, so uh, we don't have the cutouts. It can't be lifted out quite so easily. And beneath there, we have the tanks. 
on this particular boat, we've got a 400 litre fuel tank and 110 litres of water. Now let's shut those back up and head forward to the helm station, which always tends to be a bit of a treat on a windy. The ergonomics tend to be very effective indeed. As you'd expect, we've got access to the foredeck to port of that through the screen. And this is our helm seat. Now that can rotate inwards and the co-pilot seat can do the same so that you can use an extra couple of seats to really bump up the conviviality of this space. We've got a bolster here. Let's nestle ourselves into position. It's, as you would expect, a relatively paired back helm. We've got a nice big uh, plotter. We've got digital switching for pretty much everything on this boat, as you can see. So you can obviously operate that from the MFD. There's adjustability in this wheel, as you can see. We've got the Fusion stereo on the port side and the rest of the helming controls properly arranged on the starboard side, just as you would want it. And as I'm sitting here, well, quite conventionally with Windies, you expect to feel very deep set. This is quite a raked screen, actually. It still comes with that additional sort of separation for planting a fist and steadying yourself. That's particularly useful, of course, for the co-pilot over on the port side. But pretty much as expected, it feels good. It feels exactly as you would have it. It really fits your body shape, very comfortable indeed. Now let's pop up these central steps and have a look at the foredeck. Of course, this is not a particularly big boat. So it's good to see that rather than using a central uh, sunbed with walk around decks, they cover the entire foredeck in cushions. This is easily big enough for four people, I would suggest, with slightly contoured headrests here. That's quite nice, and built-in cup holders. And as you would expect, once again, a step through bow. All that really remains then is to go and take a look at the accommodation. And there's a couple of reasons why that's gonna be particularly interesting. Now if I about face and point the camera in that direction, you'll see that this foredeck, though covered in cushions, is very, very flat. It's not in the slightest bit flabby. They've not worked particularly hard to generate much volume down below. And that is why it looks so very dynamic. That's why it's going to appeal to the windy purists, because these are performance boats that you're able to spend the night on, but they're not traditional voluminous cruisers. So let's pop down and see what we see. Now, as expected, the first thing to note here is that uh, headroom is not particularly substantial. If I stand myself up, it comes up to about uh, chest height. But, of course, in the doorway, you get a decent bit of standing headroom. And it's interesting to see that they positioned the sink over here in that uh, more lofty section and the single uh, diesel hob under the uh, relatively restricted deck head. Now, the reason for that, I've talked to them about it, is the fact that they consider that most people won't actually cook that often. They're far more likely to be washing their hands after operating lines and it's more useful to have a little bit of work surface next to you. So that makes a good bit of sense. What makes slightly less sense is this. If we look back outside, this should be a uh, chest fridge. And if we open that up, you'll see that at the moment it's not. But also, it's of course hinged in the wrong direction. So if it hinged the other way, you could lift it up and access refrigerated gear from this galley station. So that makes more sense, and they're perfectly conscious of that, and they're going to make sure that that's changed for production models. As regards the bed, it's a perfectly decent sort of size. Obviously, it's very much tapered, so you wouldn't sleep with your head this side, you'd sleep with your head aft. And the natural trim of the boat, I would suggest, would make that actually quite comfortable. We've got uh, reading lights on both sides to illustrate that, uh, that fact. But we've also got plenty of storage lining the uh, bulkheads here, and we've got fabric uh, sides here so you're not bumping shoulders with cold fiberglass. There's of course a hatch up above onto that foredeck if you lift one of those foredeck, uh, those sun deck cushions. And we also have a couple of really decent, if slightly narrow windows, one on either side, uh, at the head end, precisely where you would want them, equipped with blinds and a bit more storage, a bit more shelving, and a little bit more in the way of charging facilities for your iPad and your phone. There's also a decent bit of storage under the foot of this bed. Now, if I bend down, you'll see that it's a, uh, an open plan kind of uh, space. So quick access 
for quite bulky gear. You can't quite see in there though, so I'll lift up the mattress and we'll lift up the ply partition just so you can get a slightly better look. There we go. So it's a good size. As I say, you can fit some bulky baggage in there. And if you intend to use this boat for a bit of proper weekending, then that's going to be quite useful to you. Let's spin around and have a look aft at the step, because one more thing I want to mention before we check out this starboard heads compartment is this. We've got a couple of little compartments in here, just look like basic storage compartments, but actually in the future you'll be able to spec this as a little box for three wine bottles and this as a place for some wine glasses. It's very decadent, isn't it? We've got an interesting uh, kind of, I wouldn't say clash, an interesting sort of juxtaposition of different wood finishes in here, which again, as I say, it's not, I don't think, traditional windy. It's slightly more dynamic, slightly more youthful, but it works well and it looks nice. And when we open the door to that heads compartment, as you can see, this is not specced as a shower room, just as a dedicated hedge, but you can opt for a shower, so you can use it as a wet room. And the scale of the place, again, is perfectly serviceable. Now, prices for this new Windy 29 Hurricane will go in the UK from around about £215,000 plus VAT, and that will be for the base package, including that V8 430. But I would suspect that most UK buyers would be more interested in this boat with a D6 440, and that will elevate the package price to around about £229,000 plus VAT. Either way, if you're in the market for a serious, purist, windy sports cruiser at this kind of length, then you absolutely need to come and take a look at this.